Beta FPV have entered the nano long range market with the release of the HX115LR. What makes this different is that the Express LRS receiver is built in to the all-in-one flight controller. Is it actually worth buying or should you build your own? I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV, let's take a closer look. <laughs> The HX115LR is a 1S powered and 3 inch nano long range quad. The flight controller and ESC is an all in one and it's brand new from Beta FPV. It's got 12 amps of continuous current and what makes this different is it actually has the Express LR receiver built into the flight controller. So this is where you previously would have had your FR Sky or DSM, DSMX receivers built in. It's now natively with Express LRS. The new flight controller is an STM32 F411. It has two spare UARTs now. Obviously one of those is, is going to be controlling the onboard Express LRS receivers, so that leaves you with a spare. If you did want to wire up GPS, I'd suggest using UART2. Flight controller has your standard 25 by 25 mounts and runs a USB-C. The ESC does run BHEL LES, but it is running the BlueJ version of the firmware, so you're gonna to have to download the BlueJ configurator in order to adjust it. It does have the M02 VTX, which gives you up to 350 milliwatts of output power, so it can certainly go the distance. It comes with the Cadex Ant camera, which is a pretty decent nano camera, although it does struggle with dynamic range. As you'll see from the flight footage going in and out of the shadows, it really struggles to adjust and reproduce the colors. The 1102 18,000 kV motors don't actually produce enough torque in order to spin the three inch props attached to the motor. It's supposed to be able to fly with an 18650 battery, but given how poorly it performs on three inch props with a LiPo, it is absolutely gonna struggle with that heavier battery. The frame comes with a 126 millimeter wheelbase, weighs in 14 grams, and is designed to actually have a mount for a 18650 battery, although that didn't come in mind. Battery mounts to the top plate via a TPU. While the frame can take the 1102 motors from Beta FPV, it does have 9x9 mounts as well, so if you were to buy the frame on its own, or swap out the motors, you're going to have no issues with mounting different ones. What I really liked about this quad was the frame, as well as the flight controller with the native Express LRS. The motors are the biggest weak point in this entire build. Cropping down to 65 millimeters or going up to a 1202 and 11,000 kV motor is actually gonna make the world of difference. The first flight test I'm gonna show you is the stock PIDs with the 1102 motors and the three inch props, which is what it's supposed to be designed to come with. And you'll quickly see that it really doesn't fly that well. Second flight test video is when we switch to not only the 1S baby tooth PIDs, but also propped down to 65 millimeters, and you can see it actually makes quite a difference in the flight. In terms of crash resistance, I've crashed this thing a ton of times, and unfortunately I think the all-in-one is now cooked, to the point when I connect it up to beta flight, there is no gyro and no accelerometer detected, and the ESC won't power up. Now, should you buy it? If you wanna buy the bind and fly version, I would either be prepared to also add some 65 millimeter props and change the pits. If you're gonna go and buy the motors, my recommendation is go and buy all the parts separately, buy the flight controller, buy the frame and the VTX and the camera, and then go and buy the motor separately, build it all yourself. You'll actually have a much better experience and it'll fly a lot better. I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV. Until next time, don't forget to send it.